Chapter 1. Your First Love Potion Why on earth did this dainty wallflower of a freshman make you so nervous? It certainly couldn't have been his small, underwhelming stature. Or the soft, non-confrontational way he spoke. He had no athleticism to speak of, either. And yet, around him you stumbled, felt the need to impress him. Perhaps it was because he was so pristine and elegant, smooth in all the ways you were rough. By comparison, you were royalty in blood only, whereas he seemed to carry prince-like qualities everywhere he went, regardless of his heritage. This self-analysis must have been the catalyst that opened the gaping chasm of inadequacy within you, and led you to this desperate act to curry his favor. You had to be extra subtle about it, you realized as you approached the unsuspecting new class, tray full of cold water in your hands. One cup in particular was loaded heavy with consequence. Don't ever accept a drink from her, Azul chided often. Probably for good reason, but also perhaps out of jealousy. Your natural aptitude for magical potions consistently stumped him in the classroom, well studied as he was. His alchemy skills became a similar trump card for you, and it was this small spark of malice that spawned a competitive streak between the two of you. If you had a rival, it would have been him. Mostly because your senior Idia had no interest in academic warfare. Social pressure of any kind he avoided like the Black Plague. It was really such a shame, as his talent for technology and conjuration were unmatched by all. Throughout the fall, you and Azul had been so busy squabbling with each other like siblings that you failed to notice Riddle quietly and diligently climbing to the top of your class. There the three of you stood at first semester's end, Riddle's small form taking center stage at the awards ceremony. You still recall the look of disdain your silver-haired classmate shot you behind his back. The two of you had still received considerable acknowledgement, of course, but henceforward that shiny gold chain pinned to the fiery young man's breast would remain out of your reach. It was at this same ceremony that the reserved redhead first took notice of you, too. You wouldn't call Rosehearts rude, per se, but he certainly came off as abrasive. Being around him felt akin to petting a croquet hedgehog. It appeared mostly harmless, even cute at times, but carried with it an underlying edge in knowing it could bristle at any given moment. He smiled haughtily but elegantly when he shook your hand, and the way he twirled that chain betwixt his fingers when he spoke to you caused you no end of aggravation over the following week. By the time winter break finally arrived, a fairy fire had been lit beneath you, Whatever it took, you would hone your craft even further. Whilst the other students fled home to see their families, you would find yourself slaving over a cauldron. You began playing with poisons at first, but that reached a dead end quickly, as you knew you wouldn't be able to concentrate a better one than Vil, even if you lived a million years. Hallucinogenic potions, and their ingredients, were withheld from students younger than juniors for obvious reasons. So that was another path you couldn't take. Love potions, on the other hand, were a forgotten art. One so taboo that schools had universally banned them from their curricula many generations ago. They were temperamental, volatile, widely considered a sin against nature and fate. But what if you, a gifted prodigy of the chemical arts, could perfect one? And so the research began. Riddle would come to watch you work now and then, occasionally sitting beside you to read as you pooled over piles of old tattered books. Apparently, he only went home for part of the holidays, as he could only handle his overbearing mother in small doses. It was unclear to you at the time whether he was using your tireless ambition as a source of entertainment to cure his winter boredom, or if he was simply keeping an eye on his competition. It was immaterial for you either way, you were content to ignore him the same way you pointedly disregarded Azul, who, much to your chagrin, was also on school grounds during the break. Evidently, the ice flows made seawaters unsuitable for travel this time of year. Unlike Azul, though, Riddle's company didn't bother you. 
he was careful not to disturb your concentration. And you really only became privy to his company when that meddlesome gold chain began to rattle with his movement. Only days remained before the winter break would end, and at last you had made a considerable breakthrough. You'd followed countless books to the letter, and now you had something. All that was left to do was to see how effective it was. Iron out the dosage. You tested it on one of Riddle's hedgehogs while he was gone. And now that little critter loved you to pieces. The results would be easy to explain away, too. If he asked why it was so attached to you, all you had to do was say that it bonded to you while he was back home. In all honesty, performing this experiment was the only reason you agreed to care for them in the first place. But he took it as a companionable favor without question, and was entirely grateful for your efforts. He wouldn't suspect a thing. As far as the effects on humans went, the text was mostly anecdotal at best. The only thing you knew for sure to avoid was someone who held strong feelings of fondness for the administrator already. The book said to refrain from family members in particular, which struck you as a no-brainer to begin with. But you found out that even very close friends could experience negative side effects or heightened blood levels of the substance. There was nothing in the tomes at all about using them on your enemies, so you thought it best not to test it on Azul. That, and the very idea of him pursuing you romantically made your stomach churn in disgust. A mere acquaintance, preferably one apathetic to you, would be the perfect candidate. And you knew when that jingle of gold echoed round the corner of the library, who would be the test subject for your new pursuit? Riddle actually surprised you with a gift upon arrival, a bouquet of red roses from his home. He had used some charm to make it look like they were on fire, but the blossoms didn't burn up, or feel hot to the touch. Neat trick! You smiled wide and accepted them. He was always exceptional at practical magic. In that moment you'd assumed them to be a peace offering of sorts, or even a thank you gift for caring for his animals. You'd assumed wrong. Made any headway in your research while I was away? He asked in a leading sort of way. Hmm, no. None at all, unfortunately. You lied flatly. By the way, Riddle, would you care to have tea with me? I saw you arrive this morning and got the kettle out. I'm sure it's not nearly as nice as the sets you have at your dorm, but it'll do in a pinch. We can make it like a... What was it you do over there? An unbirthday party? Yes, precisely. He chuckled jovially. That sounds delightful. Feeling his eyes bore into your back, you surreptitiously popped the cork of the tiny vial, emptying its contents into his cup. You bit your lip in hesitation at first, feeling your skin tingle with unease. This was fine, wasn't it? The two of you were completely alone where there would be absolutely no risk of public humiliation. You could deal with his insufferable pursuits, you were sure. He struck you as the traditional type, so you could politely decline his advances without any further hitch. His reputation and feelings would be spared from any real damage. Those feelings were temporary, after all. And in the event that any problems did arise, you could deal with them covertly. You just had to know for sure if it would work on him. Do you take yours with sugar? Always two cubes, please. He replied, and thanked you graciously when you served him. You lifted your teacup with proper etiquette, exactly as could be expected from someone of your status. To friendly competition, you toasted, and his smile fell. Uh, yes. To competition, I suppose. He raised his cup level with yours, noteworthy disappointment in his tone. This was an observation you would soon come to regret overlooking. However, due to the heightened anticipation consuming your entire being, you were completely blind to all the subtle details that would have made you rethink this decision. But then it was too late. It was happening. You began meticulously counting the seconds in your head the instant the drink passed his lips. A weighty silence thickened the air. And abruptly, Riddle stood up from his seat without warning, as if called to action by an unknown force to close the distance between you. 
You studied his face closely, and he met your eyes. Some mix of bewilderment and intensity flickering in his stare. <clears throat> he cleared his throat and loosened his uniform tie simultaneously, as if in a state of discomfort. Not a breath later, the teacup perched so daintily in his hand came crashing to the floor. And then, before your very eyes, he collapsed. Riddle! To be continued. <laughs>